Hello and welcome. My name is Joshua Wright. I'm a senior instructor with the SANS Institute and in this video we're going to look at manipulating Android applications. We're going to use a demonstration application that I wrote called Is It Down? And we're going to decompile the application, look at some of the low-level code supporting it, modify that code, rebuild it, and then re-sign the application so that we can use the application changes on a real or virtual Android device. I'm going to use an Android emulator device here in this exercise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and start a command line. And then from my command line I'm going to start an Android Lollipop device and I'm going to scale it just to fit a little bit better on my screen. And it will take this device a few seconds to start up. Okay now that my Android device has finished starting up I'm going to unlock it. And I don't have the Is It Down application installed yet, so I'm going to start a new command line window. And I've already downloaded all the tools that I'm going to be using for this exercise, including the application Is It Down and APK tool, uh, both of which you can find in the notes section for this video. So first I'm going to install the Is It Down application. And after it installs, we see that we have a new icon here, and I'm going to invoke the application. Now this is a basic application that I wrote to demonstrate this reverse engineering technique, and we can see that this application has a significantly annoying banner ad down the bottom here, which is kind of a nuisance, but it's uh, basically a is it down for me type of application where we can type in a URL and find out if it's up or down. In this version of the application though, it doesn't allow us to actually do any testing. It gives us this error message that says no emulator use permitted, go away. And because we're running it in the Android emulator, we might believe that the developer only wanted the application to run on real devices and not on people trying to use it on an emulator device. So what we want to do is we want to manipulate the application so that we can one, have it run on emulator devices, but two, not show this banner ad down the bottom here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uninstall the application, and to do that I need to know the name of the application package. The file name is isitdown.apk, but I need the actual application package name. And I'm going to search by listing all the packages for the string, in, uh, find string grepping for the string is it down. We see the package name is called com.willhackforsushi.isitdown. And I'm going to uninstall the application. Terrific. Now that the application is uninstalled, I'm going to go back to my APK tool utilities. APK tool allows me to decompile the APK file and turn it into a intermediate language uh, Smalley file. Smalley is uh, a source code representation that's not quite low level assembly, but it's also not as high level as Java. And using APK tool is pretty straightforward. I'm going to run APK tool D for uh, disassembler decompile and then the name of the APK file. And once that finishes, now I have a new directory called is it down. And if I go into the is it down directory, I see we have a couple of different files here. We have the Android manifest file, which declares things like the permissions. This application only has one permission, that's for internet access. But what's more interesting to us are these Smalley files. So if I cd to the Smalley directory, we start to see that directory architecture, and now we have com will hack for sushi is it down and then we have several files built here now a lot of these files are generated automatically and aren't that interesting to us but the one that we probably want to spend some time looking at is main activity .smally. if you didn't know which smally file to start looking at you would use what you know from the application to be able to start your search using the find string utility again so we can say find string go away that message that we saw. And when we do this, we see this string matching right here in the main activity.smalley file, no emulator use permitted, go away. This is a little bit of a contrivance because normally constant strings are not going to be defined in the Smalley files here. Normally you'll find that in XML resource files, but you can start your searching there, find a cross-reference to the Smalley file and work backward. Here we've made it a little more straightforward and we're just going to edit that main activity.smalley file. OK, 
Okay, and I found the go away string here and we see uh, no emulator use permitted go away. This is the message that we saw inside the application. So what we want to do is look backwards a little bit and to see what's going on. And if we look backwards a little bit, we see that there's a test here. This is an opcode instruction in the Dalvik low-level virtual machine. This that is uh, the uh, language type for these Smiley files. If equal to Z V13, jump to condition zero. We see V13 uh, is being, uh, a return parameter is being moved into V13 from this call right here. Now, this is invoking a static method called isEmulator. So it's, uh, we would guess that it's doing a test to find out if this device is an emulator, and then it returns a type of Z, which is a Boolean value in the Smalley language. So what's happening is the application is testing, am I in the emulator? And it returns a Boolean, a true or false, and it moves that result into the V13 parameter, and if the V13 parameter is equal to zero, that is false, then it jumps to condition zero. If not, then it, assumes that it is the emulator, it says no emulator use permitted, go away, and it doesn't allow us to actually uh, complete the application and perform the testing that we want to test. So we can make a simple change here. Instead of if equal to Z, what if we do something like this? If not equal to Z. If we say if not equal to Z, then when is emulator returns that yes it is in the emulator and that's a one, then it hits this if not equal to Z condition. Now we've inverted the logic. So instead of saying when it's an emulator, don't run, we're saying when it's an emulator, do run. The problem with this is if we try to run this modified application on a real Android device, then it will behave as if it ran on an emulated device. So in order to get the best functionality out of this change, we can make uh, another kind of a simple change Instead of changing that if EQZ instruction to if not equal to Z, I'm just going to cut and paste it and then add a second if not equal to Z. So in this configuration, what we're doing is we're saying if the V13 register is equal to Z, jump to condition zero, which is where we want to be. Also, if it's not equal to Z, do the same thing. So this code below here never actually gets triggered, but depend, uh, regardless of whether it's an Android emulated or an Android physical device, we are able to run the application. Now, that's, uh, that's great. We made that one change there. Now the next thing we want to be able to do is we want to be able to turn off that annoying banner ad. And usually banner ads are loaded with what's called a web view. And a web view in Android is just a little block or a little space inside the application where you display content that's returned from uh, some kind of an HTTP request. So again, we'll use the find string utility for the string web view. And then we see some hits here. We see that uh, in the main activity, it's loading a web view here. Uh, we see this deployed in a couple of places. We can also search for just an HTTP string. And this is more uh, a, a smaller set of results for us to have to look through and figure out. When we search for the string HTTP, we see two files, mainActivity$1.smalley and mainActivity.smalley that load up some kind of a string which looks like a URL which is suspiciously uh, what our ad might look like here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit these files. First main activity $1.smalley. I'm going to look for the string HTTP. And right before the string HTTP, we see that uh, it is uh, referencing, it's uh, getting the object for the web view, and then right after the URL, we see it's doing the load URL, and this is when it's going to actually populate the URL inside of the web view object. So, in order to make that not happen, we're just going to comment that out, put a little pound in front of it, and now it will not load the URL, even though all the rest of the activity is happening as normal. We're going to do that again for this other file. Again here, load URL, uh, comment that out.
Okay, now we've made all of our changes and what we're going to do is we're going to rebuild the application back into an APK file. Again, this is very straightforward. APK tool. Oops. Go back to my downloads directory. APK tool and B for build and then the is it down directory. And now it builds the APK for us. And if we go back into the is it down directory, we see that we've got a build directory now. And inside the build directory, we have uh, a couple more files here, which is the uh, recompiled software. And then in the disk directory is the new APK file. Now, unfortunately, we can't install this here because this APK file that we just built with our changes is not signed yet. And all Android applications have to be signed. Now, the Android application does not have to be signed with a trusted verified signature or trusted verified key. We can build our own key independent for ourselves and use it to sign the application for our use. And then we can use that for any other Android device as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a directory to store my key store information and I'm going to use the Java development tools that come with the JDK to be able to build a key store and to be able to sign the application. So I'm going to run the key tool utility, which is my program files, Java, JDK, bin, key tool. Uh, uh, that's the file name. It's in the bin directory of the JDK installation. And I'm going to run the following command line parameters. Now, if you're entering the parameters, I'm just entering a password of password. And now I can edit and add the signature parameters. I can add my own parameters here, but uh, certainly you could just hit enter and uh, accept all the unknowns as well. And I'm going to hit enter to keep the same password for the alias is it down for this key store. Terrific. Now that I've generated my key store information, now I'm going to use a different utility in the same bin directory, the jar signer utility. Now the jar signer utility takes some similar arguments. And I'm going to specify the APK file I generated and the name of the alias that I used when I created my keys. Enter the basic password that I generated and now the jar is signed and we can ignore this warning message right here. Now in my disk directory I have a signed APK file which I can install on my device. Success. And now when I go to run the application Notice how we are not getting the banner advertisement down the bottom here. And I can use it to test and to reach out to different websites. So this video demonstrated some techniques to be able to take an Android application, decompile it with APK tool, look through some of the Smalley files and modify the source code to change the application functionality. Now, APK tool by itself is not an evil tool. It's used frequently for adding localization to different applications in the Android world, adding local language support features, uh, adding new features that maybe the original developer didn't think of, but certainly it could also be used to take an application and to change some of the things that the developer wanted you to buy inside an application, to give you unlimited gems in an application, to uh, change uh, gameplay so that it's not fair for other players, things like that. Like anything, a tool can be used for good or evil purposes, so try to use things for good.
Thanks for watching. Check the notes on this page for links to the blog article that describes these features in more detail. Until next time.